everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at these other three step editing functions, nudge, delete, and copy. So nudge works. Uh, if you've ever used a sequencer before, you've probably seen this feature. What nudge will do is it will take whatever pattern you have and it will move it one to the right. So click, and there you can see we moved one to the right. Click it a couple more times and you can see it's moving one to the right. Now below nudge you can see it says alt, so you can hold alt if you are on Windows or Option if you're on Mac, and holding Alt will make it go backwards. There's also a second thing you can do, which is you can hold Shift. Shift will make it jump eight steps. So there I held Shift, and you can see we jumped forward eight steps. And likewise, I can hold Alt and Shift, and it will jump backwards six steps. Now, one of the things you may have noticed here as I was pressing the button is the steps were disappearing, and you might have wondered, where are they going? Why aren't they coming out the other side? Well, recall that our sequence here is actually 64 steps. And so what's happening is it's shifting within the sequence. Now, there is a neat behavior to, uh, that you can do here. So if I was to reset this, let's, see that, let's say that I set it up here. I could make a whole other sequence down here with uh, steps and accents to, I don't know, do whatever with. And then I could change my length. And as I nudge, what will happen is the steps here on the end, you can see the steps on the end there are starting to cycle in. Now this can be used very creatively to allow you to bring in new steps while you're playing around with something, or if you have an idea and you kind of want to jump it around. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do with this, um, this behavior of kind of being able to sort of bring things on stage and take things off stage. Anyways, that's nudge. So remember, clicking it goes one to the right, holding alt and clicking it goes one to the left, Holding shift goes eight to the right, and holding alt and shift goes eight to the left. All right, so clearing out what we've got here. If you've been playing with different step editing types, one of the things you may have noticed is that some steps are a little bit harder to get rid of. So it's specifically micro steps and tied steps. You might have thought, how do I get rid of a micro step? And you clicked it and instead you came to the editor and you're like, no, that's not what I want. How would I get out of that? And you might have also wanted to get rid of a tied step and you clicked it and you found that instead it just split the tied step into two. So the way around, or the way to handle this situation is actually with this delete button. So delete works fairly simply. You press it, it lights up, and then once this is lit up, you can click on any step and it will clear that up. So you can see, boom, there we go, micro step done. Same thing, delete, I can click on any of the steps here in this tied step and it will erase the whole thing for me. All right, lastly, let's talk about copy. So uh, let's say that I have some, some sequence here and uh, I like this sequence, but I want to uh, copy it to another track and maybe do something slightly different with it. Copy requires a couple of clicks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click copy. Now what copy will do is it will take all of the 64 steps that I'm viewing, whatever I am viewing in the editing, step editing grid here, it will take that and it will put it in the clipboard. And you know that something is in the clipboard because you can see here that the copy button is flashing. Now I can go to any other location. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to track five. And if I hit copy a second time while it's flashing, it will paste all of those steps into that track. Cool, so one of the things you may have noticed there is when, when I hit paste, so here, I'll do it again. So I'm gonna copy these steps, I'll go to track six. Now watch what happens to the copy button. So I'm gonna click it again, it pastes the steps, but you see here how the copy button stops flashing. What if you want to paste the thing that you copied into multiple locations? So that's what, if you look down here right below the, the copy button, it says shift, that's what you can use that button for. So I'm gonna copy again, it's gonna capture all of these. Let's go over here to track nine. I am holding down shift, so I'm holding down shift and while shift is being held down, I'm gonna click copy. You notice that what it did is it pasted the steps that I copied, but it's still flashing. So in other words, it's pasted the steps here, but it kept the copy in the clipboard. So then I can go over to some other track, let's say track 12, and I can paste again without having to recopy. 